Today's job is to pull the transmission. Um, I need to get it off for a couple of reasons. Firstly, I want to get it off just so I can actually clean it. Um, rather than try and clean it in situ, I can get it out on the bench and give it a good scrub down. And secondly, I want to check the clutch plate while I'm in there. It would be stupid to do all this work on it and then get all the shale back on, get it looking lovely, take it out on the road and then find the clutch needs changing on it. Whilst it's not a huge job, I can do it from underneath the car anyway. Um, as you can see, some of the bolts are on the top of the bell housing, so it's just one of those jobs you may as well do when you've got it down this far. I would kick myself if I didn't do it. I've already um, oiled the bolts, as you can see, just to make them come out a little bit easier. They come out pretty easy, to be fair, anyway. The top three are captive. They just screw into the top of the block, and then you've got another four or five down the sides with nuts on the back. And on the left-hand side, you can there you can just see the bulge from the starter motor, and this also constitutes two of the bolts. With the bolts out, a bit, a bit of wiggling and prising it apart with a um, crowbar. The two there, you can see they split off quite nicely. All I've done there, as you can see, is put some old breeze blocks under the engine just to um, just to prop it up because um, obviously the engine gearbox is one piece. So as soon as you take it off, the engine wants to drop down, so a few bricks underneath. And then once it's out, zap it in some degreaser and start to work on it with the old wire brush. The old wire brush is going to get a good workout. And then once the grime is loose, we're just going to give it a quick zap over with a hose pipe just to get all that loose debris off it. And you can see here with a little splash, it comes up very nicely. Obviously, being a gearbox, there aren't a huge amount of electronics on it. You've got the electronics for the overdrive and the um, reverse light, but again, there's not really much going on with it. There we can see one of the rare sunny days. That block is now um, cleaned up quite nicely. As I've said before on all these things, I'm never going to go to OTT with it. And then, last job, got some hammerite, high temperature enamel paint. And we're just going to go over the parts that should be black, so the, um, the bell housing there and the actual main block of the gearbox. That is all, um, that is all meant to be black, so you know, let's make it look nice while we're here. Obviously you're not going to see any of this when the car's back assembled and the uh, shell's back on it, but you know, I'll know it's there. And there it is drying in the sun, looking a lot more shiny and a lot more nice. Again, it's only cosmetic, but like I say, if you're going to um, if you're going to do it, why not try and do it properly? So, what else have we been doing in the meantime? Still trying to tackle a few of the odd jobs. Um, so we've got the starter motor. Again, as before, I've cleaned that back, repainted it. It's a nice hammerite on there. So hopefully that will. Um, Last, again, it was all rusted out before. It still moves okay. I haven't actually tested it yet, but I'm pretty sure it'll be fine. So, obviously, that protrudes from the engine. So, when it all goes back together, I want it on there and I want it looking nice. Uh, same with the exhaust manifold. Um, I didn't take a photo of this before because, you know, trying to film and do everything on your own it can be quite a task. And a lot of time you just forget. So, this was rusted to hell. Show you the uh, end of it there, you can see the sort of colour I mean, but it was really, really furry. So, again, I've stripped that back down, rubbed the hell out of it with a wire brush, and then hammerite coated it with the same black enamel. So, hopefully, I know it's going to get hot, I don't know if that's going to affect that paint too much. It is a high temperature enamel, but you know, we'll see. But again, it looks much nicer. So, when that's back on, inlet manifold and the carbs are back on and the engine's been also painted and detailed I think it will look quite nice at least I hope so ah, the seats the good old seats I was hoping these would just be a uh, straight black vinyl but as you can see they're not this is a 1977 car and as per the 1970s it has this horrific black and white dog tooth pattern on it and it is absolutely horrific um, Two problems with that. One, I just don't like it. Three problems, actually. One, I don't like it. Two, it's tatty and ripped. And three, because it's a fabric, you know, I dread to think how many sweaty arses have been on this over the years. 
and I don't want to sit on it. So we're going to um, take the seats apart, split the seams, cut these panels out, use them as templates, and then put in a new piece of matching, or as close as we can get, black vinyl. So the whole thing is just black vinyl. That'll be so much nicer and a lot easier to keep clean. In fact, I did one yesterday. Try and get it to stand up. So that's the seat back. Obviously the metal frame is pulled out. This is just the, uh, the fabric outer. But I think that black vinyl is a pretty good match. So this is the old vinyl, this is the new. So I hope you'll agree, it's a pretty good match. So I need to do the seat base for that one. Do the other seat as well. Um, this is the seat backs. So they're a steel frame with these, um, I can't tell if they're rubber or leather straps, suspension straps, and then this foam block which goes in as well, which is this sort of chip foam with the hessian line on it to keep it all together. And again, I've got much nicer foam in my workshop. I've got lots of um, lots of old block foam from sofa cushions, so I'll probably remake my new seat backs. Um, you know, clean the seats up as per everything else, get them stripped back, repainted, grease up the mechanisms, make sure they're nice, redo the foam, put the new sleeves on them, and then uh, make sure they're all padded out so they're nice and tight as a drum. That's the plan. Also, as it's my birthday in a few days. I've had my birthday present early from the wife, so I've got myself a nice toolkit. I've had the same small socket set since I was 17 years old, um, and it's finally, um, you know, it's time to uh, to move on. It was only a cheap one. I think my dad got it for me when I first started driving. That was uh, quite a few years ago, so it's lasted very, very well. But now finally upgrading to a decent tool set, one of the Halfers Advanced range with a lifetime guarantee on it, which is nice. So again, decent socket set now, extension bars, all that good stuff. Trued myself to a set of spanners to match because, you know, like with most things on cars, a lot of times you've got a nut and a bolt, so you need a socket on one side and a spanner on the other. So there is our uh, clutch and gearbox back onto the main block. Freshly painted bell housing looks quite nice, and obviously as you go into the main block, you can see there that's also going to get a lick of paint. I've given the rocker cover a quick zap of silver paint as well, just because you know why not. Um, and still can't get the engine to crank all the way. It will go around halfway and then it stops. I'm not going to force it in case there's a problem with one of the valves. I'm not going to snap anything. It could just be a corrosion ring inside of one of the bores but I've ordered a um, boroscope. So I'm waiting for that arri to arrive. When that arrives, I can go in down through one of the spark plug holes, stick a camera in there, see what's going on inside the cylinder. And if I can't see anything going on, then I'll just pull the head off and we can have a look at the, um, the cylinders without the head on, which will be much easier. But I, you know, I don't want to take the camera shaft and the head off unless I absolutely have to. So we'll see. Um, and then the last job will be to take the front bumper off here take the bumper of the plate and the lights off and then I'll get it outside, get it pressure washed, see how much of this white paint I can get off the chassis. I'm hoping I don't have to go with this thing with a wire brush and get this paint off. I'm going to see how easy it comes off with the pressure washer and if it comes off easily then I'll just strip it off with the pressure washer and if not then I don't know. I may just have to clean it up and go, go back over it. If the rust isn't coming through the paint then it can stay on there, that's not a problem. But in areas where it flakes off, then obviously that is a problem. I also dis did find a rust hole as well. I know I said the chassis was amazing and there was no rust on it. But of course, when you look deeper, you always find problems. Nice little rust pile there. So we've got about a two inch hole there, just behind the front anti-roll bar. But not a problem, it's good metal both sides of it, so all I'll do is get it up on ramps, 
cut a square out, weld a patch in, cover it over and we're good to go. The other side's fine. Again I've been round and banged all that with a hammer, that's fine. And the rest of it, uh, back underneath the chassis there, I know you can't see it very well, but the rest of it underneath the chassis looks pretty good. It's a bit scabby in terms of paint work, of course, because like I say, I think someone's just used white emulsion to paint it, which, you know, isn't going to stick. All this is just flaking back off again. So I'm hoping the pressure washer will just be able to zap that off and make my life a lot easier. But we'll have to see. And then once it's all pressure washed, I can then, the chassis is essentially done, then I can start taking the corner at a time. I'm going to come down here, unbolt the entire wishbone for the front, take off the track rod end, brake lines, disconnect it from the chassis, take it away, and then I can strip all those parts down on their own. Check the springs, make sure they're still okay, see how easy they are to clean up. I may buy a new set if, you know, if I can't clean them up, but hopefully I can clean them up. Um, same with the brake calipers, um, and again checking all the bushings on like the anti-roll bar joints and that. So I think they'll all need changing, but we'll have a look over there. Ball joints as well. See how much of it is salvageable. The brake discs actually look pretty good. There's plenty of meat on those. I'll have to get in and see what the, cal uh, the calipers are like. Make sure the calipers aren't leaking or anything. So yeah, it's coming on, but you know, obviously. It's a lot of work, but I knew that before I took it on. It's not one of those projects you're going to get done in a weekend, unfortunately. As much as I'd love to be flying around with the top down now, enjoying it, that's just not going to happen. It's going to be a labour of love and it's going to take me months to do. I'd love to get it done by the summer. That's my original intention, see if I can get it all done by the summer, but I don't know. I work two jobs as well as doing this. So I'm only getting to do maybe an hour, two hours a day on it at the moment. So it's quite difficult to try and find the time. And obviously I've still, once all the chassis is done and that all works and I even get the engine running, I still need to get the body back on and then go through and do the body. I need to cut out one of the floor pans, weld that. The bonnet itself up there is going to need attention, as are the doors. <laughs> so yeah, lots to do, never a dull day. But what else would you be doing, right?